Deepcool's new LT series all-in-one liquid coolers feature some of the company's latest technology, such as a new fourth generation pump design featuring a powerful three-phase motor, a new copper cold plate featuring improved micro skive channels, as well as the company's FK120 fluid dynamic bearing fans, and a very unique looking pump top cover design featuring multiple infinity mirrors. But can this new LT720 live up to Deepcool's reputation of offering excellent thermal performance and good value. Let's find out. So the new LT series from Deepcool is the company's latest all-in-one liquid CPU cooler series. Both Luke and myself have been very impressed with Deepcool over the years, especially the all-in-one liquid coolers have always offered excellent thermal performance and pretty good value for money as well. LT series includes this LT720, which is the one I'm gonna be reviewing today. This is a 360 millimeter radiator, 320 mil fans. There's also a smaller LT520 with just two fans. LT720, that's gonna be priced at just under 120 pounds in the UK. And then the smaller LT520, that'll be priced at just under 105 pounds. You'll be able to pick both of these up from scan.co.uk. So we're looking at the LT720 and it uses a traditional style 27 millimeter thick all aluminium radiator. It features deep cools anti-leak technology. We've covered this a lot on this channel so I'm not going to go into that in great detail again but basically this helps to prevent leaks in the system or if a leak occurs it helps to stop the liquid going all over the place. On the uh, pump housing here we've got quite a big and chunky top to it. It actually removes this top pretty easily just pulls off and on here You've got several infinity mirrors, so this should kind of reflect the RGB lighting effects in all different directions. The only problem I can see initially with this cover is it has a cutout here and it fits that way on the uh, tubing. So that means you can't actually rotate this cover depending on the orientation that you have the CPU block installed, which is a bit of a shame. You can see inside here there's some uh, LEDs for the RGB lighting. We have just a standard three pin five volt ARGB connection there. So that'll please users that don't like proprietary connections and want to just connect directly to the motherboard or simple uh, other ARGB controllers that use the standard five volt connections. As well as the aluminum radiator, we've got tubing with a length of 410 millimeters. You can see as well, it's got a premium braided sleeve on there. We say it's premium still, not really a premium feature I'd say these days. I can't really think of any new all-in-one CPU coolers that don't have this braiding on, but it does look nice and it does look good quality. And there's a good amount of flexibility to that tubing as well. So you should be able to make some tight bends with it and not worry too much about the rubber tubing inside kinking and causing any problems with flow. There's also these two handy tubing clips that kind of keep it tidy and neat. So they're a nice little feature. They've got a deep cool log on them there. You can slide those up and down the uh, tubing to where you need to use them. So that's a nice feature as well. And as I mentioned previously as well, inside this pump top is Deepcool's latest fourth generation pump with a powerful three phase motor. There's also a large copper cold plate there and this is big enough as well for all current desktop platforms. So this will fit all current AMD or current Intel platforms, including high end desktop. And as you can see as well, it comes protected with a plastic cover and then underneath that cover is some pre-applied thermal paste. I do like to see a pre-applied thermal paste like that because it means for the novice user they're not going to get the installation wrong if they follow the instructions they don't have to apply their own paste to the CPU but I also would like to see a small tube or some thermal paste in the box. Unfortunately not with this you don't get that so that is a bit of a shame but it's not a deal breaker in any way. Right at the base of the water block are right angle fittings. You can see these are articulating fittings, so they allow some movement and rotation 
of the fittings to make it easier when you're positioning the water block over the CPU. The pump operates at a speed of up to 3,100 RPM and as you can see at the base of the pump there is just a standard three pin fan header. With the LT720 you get three of these deep cool FK120 fluid dynamic bearing fans. These operate at a speed of between 500 to 2,250 RPM. They have a high airflow rate of 85.85 cubic feet per minute, high static pressure and low noise levels of 32.9 decibels. As I've already mentioned, the LT series can be installed on all the latest desktop platforms from Intel and AMD, including high-end desktop. With the LT series is an installation kit for AMD platforms, an Intel specific backplate and Intel installation kit, a bag full of short and long fan screws, thumb screws for mounting the water block and a three-way PWM fan splitter. Included with the LT720 is an easy to follow installation manual with clear illustrations that guides the user through the installation process. To install the LT720 on AMD platforms, first you need to remove the stock AMD retention bracket. You must retain the stock AMD backplate and then screw the AMD standoffs in position. Flip the water block over and then fix in position the relevant AMD brackets using the countersunk screws provided. Now you can lower the water block in position over the CPU and fix it in place with the provided thumb screws. Next, attach the fans to the radiator using the relevant screws in either a push or pull configuration. And then fix the radiator in position in your case, either at the front or the top, depending on your preference. So that's the cooling installed. It's a really quick, process it probably took me 10 minutes maybe even less to install the whole cooler and get the wiring connected up to the motherboard the installation is a little quicker on the open test bench because you have easier access and installing the radiator is a bit quicker because it's not fiddling about inside a case but even inside a case i wouldn't expect longer than 10 or 15 minutes to install this cooler if you are technically minded the reason it's so quick is because it retains the stock backplate so you don't have any additional backplate to assemble there's no proprietary wiring connections no additional RGB hubs to install. So obviously that saves time with cable management and everything else. So for me, that's a win for Deepcool. It's a really quick and simple installation. And if you are a novice user that maybe hasn't installed an all-in-one liquid cooler before, following the manual is really simple. It's very clear and concise. And anybody that's technically minded or has installed several AIOs previously, I could probably say you would be able to install this without even having to look at the manual. It's that simple. Once you get the cooler installed, you'll realize that the RGB control is done through the motherboard because you connect it just to a three pin ARGB header. We're using the uh, X570 Aorus Elite motherboard from Gigabyte. So that means we have to use the Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2 software. On here, it's really simple. So we are connected up to the digital LED header on the top corner of the motherboard. So just select that in the software and then we can choose all different types of RGB settings. So you could just have static or other styles that you choose really. So there's flashing styles, color cycling, digital ones. So there's like rainbow effects and the effect you'll get on the cooler will depend on how good the RGB control is in the motherboard software. So now we need to look at the thermal performance. And if you've been a viewer of the Kit Guru channel for a while, you'll know that Luke has been doing a lot of the CPU coolers recently and he's been doing a really good job of it. So what I want to do is I want to keep my testing methodology as close to Luke's as possible so that you guys can then take a look at Luke's charts and compare them with mine and you'll get a good idea of how each cooler performs. It'll be a good comparison for you guys having the testing as similar as possible. For the test bench, I'm using an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X CPU. The motherboard is the X570 Aorus Elite from Gigabyte. There's 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL, and we'll have the system set up in two configurations. So there'll be a manual overclock on the CPU at 4.45 gigahertz with the voltage at 1.3 volts. We'll run two tests with that. So one with the fans at maximum RPM and the pump at maximum RPM, and then a noise normalized test at 40 decibels. Then I'll run an additional test using precision boost overdrive in automatic mode. If you wanna check out the whole 
testing methodology, make sure you head over to kitguru.net and check out the review page of this cooler. All the testing methodology is on there. The graphics card in the system is the MSI RX 6600 XT Gaming X and that will be in its zero decibel, zero RPM fan mode at all times so that won't affect any noise testing. Let's begin with the noise levels as this will give us a good indication of what to expect from thermal performance based on noise output. With fans running at their maximum RPM, the Deepcool LT720 sits somewhere in the middle of our results at 53 decibels noise output. As far as 360 millimeter coolers go, it is relatively loud, but not too distracting. Compared with other units from the likes of Be Quiet, Lian Li and MSI, the LT720 is marginally quieter, but thermal takes tough liquid ARGB sync is significantly quieter. Deepcool has tuned its fans to offer high thermal performance levels. With fans at maximum RPM, the Deepcool LT720 cooled our manually overclocked 5950X to a delta of 55 degrees, which is an outstanding result and beats off competition from the likes of MSI, Thermal Take and Be Quiet 360mm coolers. Tuning the cooler's fans to 40 decibels noise output meant reducing the speed to 1380 RPM RPM or 66% duty cycle. Even at 40 decibels, the LT720 manages to produce almost chart topping performance, which is impressive given how much fan speed had to be reduced to meet the 40 decibels target. In the PBO test, the most important metric here is clock speed and cooling power, as the difference in temperature delta is small between coolers. With fans back at 100% duty cycle during the PBO test, this puts the LT720 back at the top of our chart by maintaining the highest average CPU clock frequency. With the Deepcool LT720 handling almost 245 watts of package power, which is an excellent result. So as we've seen, the Deepcool LT720 offers outstanding thermal performance, almost topping all of our charts. Installation process is quick and simple. The manual is easy to follow. RGB lighting effects may not suit everyone who's looking to have the system lit up like a Christmas tree with full RGB lighting effects but just that single zone of RGB lighting on the CPU block will be enough to please those that just want some basic illumination. In terms of the looks, the Infinity Mirror design, it may not be everyone's cup of tea. I don't mind it, it's not offensive to look at. It's a shame you can't rotate that top cover to change the orientation depending on how you've got the water block installed. One thing that we should all agree on is the price because £120 in the UK seems to be excellent value for money at the moment for 360 millimeter all-in-one CPU cooler. Yes, it might be missing some RGB lighting effects, but there is the Deepcool LS720 with full RGB lighting. The only thing maybe perhaps that Deepcool is missing at the moment is a all-in-one CPU cooler with an LCD display because that seems to be the trend or the fashion at the moment. But this for 120 pounds in the UK, I can't fault it, it represents brilliant value and it's also backed by a five year Deepcool warranty. So thanks for watching this review of the Deepcool LT720. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section. Also, while you're there, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed watching the video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so now. And also, if you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru, you can always support us by heading over to our store and picking up some of the new merch. You can even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.